All right, folks, why don't we get started? Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the April Northwest Gas Association webinar. Uh, my name is Connor Wrighton, and I will serve as your moderator for today. Uh, for today's webinar, we're going to be featuring Greg Lovett of the Gold Shovel Standard, and Greg will be discussing their work on behalf of major operators to develop and deploy uh, what they refer to as Damage Prevention Incident Ratio, or DPIR. Uh, before we begin, as always, we're going to review the basics for how the webinar works. Uh, we've set aside plenty of time for questions. We strongly encourage that you ask them as they come up, uh, and you can do that. Uh, because you'll be muted, uh, you'll have to type those questions in. You'll see the GoToMeeting control panel, which should be on the right side of your screen. Um, near the bottom, there is a chat uh, box that you can click into. Uh, you can type those messages out to me, and I'd be happy to introduce those questions on your behalf. Uh, Greg has also agreed to distribute a PDF copy of his slides uh, for those who would like a copy. Uh, we will also be recording this webinar, and that will be available on the Northwest Gas Association's YouTube page. Uh, if you want to send me an email, uh, you can easily respond to the one that I sent out this morning, uh, and I'd be happy to, uh, to send back a PDF of the slideshow or a link, uh, which should be made available uh, to the YouTube video either later this afternoon or early tomorrow. Um, one quick note before we launch in, uh, the annual energy conference is coming up June 5th and 6th at Skamania Lodge. Uh, that's about 30 minutes outside of Portland and it, it should be uh, it's shaping up to be a really great event. Hope that we'll see many of you there. Uh, go to nwga.org for more information on that. Uh, sign up is now, uh, is now open. Uh, so again, uh, go to nwga.org uh, for that. Uh, lastly, before we get started, I'll introduce the Northwest Gas Association. Uh, we represent the six investor-owned gas utilities operating in the Pacific Northwest, along with three large natural gas transmission lines. Our members are in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and British Columbia. And you can visit our website at nwga.org for more information. And with that, I'm going to pass things over uh, to Greg if you are ready to go. I am. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me uh, go ahead and share my screen. Can everyone see that okay? Can, can you see that okay? Connor? Yeah, looks perfect. Okay, great. So, so thanks, everyone, for uh, joining. My name is Greg Lovett. I'm the uh, Chief Operating Officer uh, for the Gold Shovel Standard. Um, uh, as uh, Connor mentioned, I'll walk you through uh, the metrics side of what the Gold Shovel program is doing. Um, to frame the discussion, and for those who aren't familiar with uh, Gold Shovel, we do two primary things. Uh, there's a, a number of things that uh, are involved in the program, but two primary things are one, we are an independent third party that checks to ensure that every excavator who's full shovel certified has a damage prevention program in place. Uh, you'd be surprised how many come through the program and don't actually have one. Um, so that's the first primary thing we do. And then the second primary thing we do is we track their performance through standardized metrics. So I won't spend too much time on the first piece today. Uh, we'll take our time uh, working through the second piece. Uh, so we'll just briefly talk about, you know, why why we have metrics in place, uh, what makes up ours, um, and then we'll show how this rolls up uh, to an owner-operator uh, towards the end. So let's dive in here. So um, in the context of, you know, why we need metrics, there's there's been a lot of good things that have gone on, um, and we've made uh, tremendous progress but there seems to be somewhat of a plateauing uh, in terms of our ability to continually reduce damages. So uh, you have a, a construct where uh, to get damages lower, uh, the effort required is, is enormous, whereas the success kind of plateaus. If we take a look at other uh, safety measurements, uh, these are represent graphs of uh, various OSHA type measurements and we see that even though they're self-reported and they're imperfect and sometimes people try and game the system, they tend to work over time. They tend to uh, 
increased performance, decrease, you know, in these constructs, uh, human safety uh, issues over time. So uh, we have these different ones. TRIR is the one I usually like to default to, which, you know, I'm assuming everyone's a familiar with, but for those who aren't, this is the OSHA uh, total recordable incident uh, rate for uh, human safety incidents. And so uh, what we have put in place is the DPIR, which is the damage prevention incident ratio. So it's basically TRIR, but for buried infrastructure. And we believe uh, this is the next uh, evolution of what we should be looking at as an industry. So I usually put this stuff at the end, but so that I can pique your interest early on, I'll show some example results. This, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but if you take a look at, you know, what, who's involved in the various uh, incidents for the stakeholders, uh, you've got the owner operators trying to reduce their own damages as well as their direct contractors. You've got owner operators trying to reduce the third party damages and then you've got the excavators and across all groups, uh, these are again, kind of select results, but across all groups, all, all sizes, we see that this is working. Um, even uh, in uh, Sacramento, where PG&E had adopted the gold shovel standard, the city of Sacramento had also adopted it. And when you talk to them, they'll attest to the fact that their first and second party damages are down and that's directly impacting PG&E's third party damages. So, it, so it's working. So let me walk you through what the it is. So when we talk about the metrics, uh, the way this shows up is in a report and I'm going to start with how this shows up for an individual excavator. Uh, so, you know, typically when I say excavator, I'm, I'm meaning contractor, but obviously owner operators have their own crews at times as well. But uh, this would be a, a, an individual company and they've got three sections to this report. They've got an individual damages section where these are just straight raw numbers of damages, not normalized. And then you have two sections that are normalized. One is across the work hours. So this just goes to the volume of work that they do and, you know, how, how many damages uh, correlate to that work. And then the one called ticket notifications is the second way we normalize that. And the reason why we do that is because it goes to density. So these are not one call tickets. These are one call ticket notifications. So the notifications that are made to utility companies for a ticket. And again, it goes to density. You're gonna have many more notifications in a city than you would in a desert as an example. And it's much easier to not, something, not hit something in the desert than it is in a city. So we, we look at these two primary things. So I know there's a lot of detail on this screen. I will zoom in on a single month and walk you through it. Just structurally, the way this shows up is you've got the columns across the top are the months for this individual excavator. There's an average, in this case, it's eight months. Uh, and then you've got these different rows, which I'll walk you through. So let me, let me do that now. So this is just looking at a single month for now. So at the highest level, we call out damages that were caused uh, on a project that didn't have a valid one call ticket. Uh, you know, as we all know, we, that's a no-no. We don't want that happening at all. And so we call that out individually. From there, we move into uh, these different categories of damages and we get to the bottom, and I'll, again, I'll walk you through these rows, but we get to the bottom where you have a, a rem, what we call remaining damages. And, and that's what we'll end up focusing on, but let me show you how we get there. Um, so you start with all damages, then you have damages to non-participating facilities. So these would be damages that occurred uh, within a facility uh, that doesn't have to participate in the one call uh, process. So there's different, you know, cities that for which this occurs. And so what you're looking at here is there was one such damage that, you know, these lines weren't marked. And so this was pulled out of, it doesn't quote unquote count against them. The next category is it was a mismark, right? So they thought it was in a certain place. They did what they were supposed to do. It wasn't, they hit it. And so there was two such incidents so that's pulled out. Uh, so you have then a subtotal. The next group is you have uh, work, there was strata, strata work being done, removing strata, or it was previously uh, installed improperly. So in your mind's eye, the, 
the easiest example to give you is you've got utility lines directly under a slab of concrete or embedded within it. You're not going to get at that with a shovel. And so uh, that would be pulled out, not counted against them. And the last uh, is hand tool damage. So, you know, CGA has defined this as a best practice. Uh, the committee who put this together was initially trying to get people to stop taking a backhoe and destroying lines because, you know, mechanized damages tend to be far more severe than non-mechanized. And so, uh, since they were doing what they were, you know, supposed to be doing, potholing, so on and so forth, and we tr and we track all strikes to a line, that too would be pulled out. These metrics were developed uh, by the industry. So, uh, on this committee in particular, uh, across all the committees and gold shovelers, probably 50 individuals from industry. On this committee in particular, there was a cross section of both excavators, which rep represented the vast majority of the individuals and owner operators. Um, so that's how uh, these were developed. And so, as I mentioned, we focus on remaining damages. So when I go back now, uh, and now, I, now we've normalized this, if you look at the title, we've normalized this across uh, work hours. You can see that there's these various ratios uh, across these incidents. Uh, jumping ahead a little, as an owner operator, you would get this report on an individual contractor. So if you want to look at how many hand tool damages they had and have a discussion with them about that, you can. But the score, the DPIR ratio, is based on this rolling average. It will roll up to 12 months like TRIR does. Uh, this company here would have been with the program just eight months, so it'll be a rolling eight month average. But for a company that would have been with the program for 14 months, let's say, it'll it'll be a rolling 12 month average. So this would be their work hours DPIR. And then I've clicked again, and now the title has changed to the notifications. So now we're normalizing this across one call ticket notifications, and this is their density DPIR. So that's how the metrics are put together. Um, um, so, uh, everything is based on that. So, this, these incidents that we're capturing are reported by the excavator and they're cross-checked uh, by various sources that we have, other member utility companies and other, and other sources. So, when there's, a, when there's an incident, we capture these primary questions, right? So was there a valid one call ticket? Was this a mismark, so on and so forth? That becomes the basis for what you just saw. But we also capture a whole slew of other details uh, on this incident. Um, so what was the equipment type used? What was the facility being used for? What was the work type? So you might've been doing water work, but you hit a gas line. And then all sorts of custom tags. So this excavator can tag it with, you know, certain crew names or crew leads or you know they're seeing a trend that you know on the Friday before every long holiday uh, incidents tend to increase because people are trying to get out of there quickly. Uh, they can tag it down at the bottom right uh, with whatever they want. These primary questions become the basis for the metrics report and their number, but they have access to all these things to run analytics. So we call these things management reports. It shows up in their site as a statistics section. So I won't spend too much time doing this because as you can imagine, you can filter on all these things so you can have you know, 500 variations of data. I'll just show you two just so you can get a flavor as to how this um, is viewed by the excavator. So the first would be looking at incidents over time. So they might be tracking just you know, straight incidents or you might be tracking their incidents. Uh, but when we peel the onion back, we can see for this particular contractor, their distribution facility hits actually tend to be increasing over time where their service drop type uh, facilities were decreasing over time. So service drop would be like electric service, gas service, water service, or the drop lingo is like telco drop, cable TV drop, um, and your distribution facilities be like main lines or ca main cable runs. Um, so anyways, the idea is again, you're peeling the onion back to look deeper. This view is interesting. So now, again, for this contractor, uh, sorry, for this individual excavator, we're looking at their remaining damages, right? So somewhat preventable. And we're, and we're correlating that to their work hours. 
per month. So for this particular company, there was a correlation between being understaffed and line strikes. So when they were understaffed and rushing through things, uh, they were hitting things more often, whereas when they staffed up and they had a, a larger number of crews who were taking their time, their incidents tend to decrease thereafter. So again, just a couple of examples. So now I'll show you, I'll, I'll specifically pivot and I'll show you how does this uh, roll up to an owner operator who wants to look at all of their contractors. So, so here's a view of that. So again, a lot of information on the screen, but let me just kind of structurally walk you through it and then I'll, I'll pop through a couple sections. So the view up at the top left is the DPIR view, right? The official kind of 12 month rolling average view. You can change this or your, you know, your teams can change this to look at individual months or a range of months, custom range. Uh, up at the bo uh, top right, everything is state-based because the, uh, as you all know, the regulations vary from state to state, particularly the one call ticket timeframes vary. So some states, you know, the ticket just lasts a few weeks. Other states, they're indefinite. Uh, you can't compare one contractor to another uh, who, if they're operating in different states. So we have every comparison that's looked at state-based. And so now as an owner operator, you can look at any, your teams can look at any of your states. And then we've got the columns beneath that are the excavators. These obviously, these would not be these would not be anonymous to you. You would see the company names. This is just an example report. Uh, but then we have these, you know, the primary columns. So your work hours, DPIR for those companies, how that's trending, and their density DPIR and how that's trending. So again, just a couple of uh, things that your teams can do. One is they could click into a company and see these metrics reports that I had walked you through before or the statistics so they too can, you know, peel back the ending on companies to try and figure out what's going on. We also provide a service to where we'll do that work on a quarterly basis and provide a, a quarterly analysis report so that your teams can get that kind of prepackaged and make it easy for them to quickly see what's going on and have action items related to that. Um, the other thing here that's interesting is this company too, they are, you know, not doing well and getting worse. Uh, when we look at the raw damage numbers for these companies, we could see that company two wouldn't appear to be doing that bad. They might not show up on anyone's radar. And the idea is that they don't do much work, but when they do work, they hit stuff. And so that's the, again, the power of kind of normalizing these metrics. Also the other interesting thing uh, with this company is they've got um, a, you know, worsening work hours DPIR, but their density DPIR is improving. So you might scratch your head and say, how, how is that possible? Well, in this instance, this company was accustomed to working in rural areas, uh, had moved to do more city work. They're, so now their one call ticket notifications are increasing. So they're, they're improving in that sense, but they're hitting more things because they're not accustomed to it. So that's why having to use is powerful. Um, again, just a couple of other things so you can see, you know, your teams can see how this is trending. This is what you want to look for. And again, this might not be obvious, but what you're looking at is the line strikes across all networks. So, uh, you know, I'm SoCal Gas. I've got a contractor who's working for me. Uh, I'm seeing that contractor's line strikes on my network as well as any other network. And so, this is powerful as a leading indicator because I, SoCal Gas, might be getting lucky that this contractor isn't hitting me, but they're hitting things. And so now I, I can see that and I can have a discussion with them and uh, have them manage to this issue. Um, and yeah, so basically that's it. So I, I wanted to get through this quickly and uh, uh, leave time for questions and answers. So I saw a couple come in. Connor, you want to, should we run through that now? Yeah, happy to do that. Uh, before we get to the question I have here, um, just a reminder, type your questions into the chat function that's on that GoToMeeting control panel. Uh, we'll do a, a couple of minutes after we finish with the questions to make sure you have time to do that. But uh, if you can get that in sooner, that'd be great. Uh, so I have one question here, and that is, um, can you view stats of all contractors that are gold shovel certified or only those that work for you? 
So that's a really good question, and let me let me pull this up to answer that. I got some other appendix slide, and I'll show you this. So we usually use this uh, slide to answer that question. So um, the the short answer is, uh, you can see it if they've shared it with you. So let me, let me walk through this. So on the left, this is the information we capture, the work hours and the incident details we capture from the excavator and the one call ticket volume for that excavator, we, we capture from the one call centers themselves. We have direct tie-ins with the one call centers are expanding those tie-ins and so that's how we capture that info. The little green thing up at the top represents the fact that these excavators, these excavators certify that data. So they, they you know, e-signature this thing every month and say, this is correct. I'm representing it to my customer that this is correct, right? So we're, we're this isn't just information we happen to capture. You know, this is them reporting it to you. So much like if you had asked for their financials and they fudge them, th this is along the same vein. They, you know, they, they are now uh, held accountable to a higher standard of reporting. So anyway, so we move those into the metrics. Again, this is the excavator view. They choose to share that. So they choose to share that internally with their own teams, management teams, safety departments, or their customers. And so, um, you as an owner operator, uh, would be able to see that, uh, for your contractors. Uh, but for those who aren't working for you, you will not see it. You will see an average for all gold shovel contractors in that state. So that's powerful because you can see, you know, how your contractors compare to each other. Um, and let me, let me go back to this just for a minute. So when we we're here, you can see how your contractors compare to each other, but also you can see how do they compare to a state median. And so that is the you know totality of all the gold shovel standard excavators in that state. Perfect, thanks, Greg. Uh, I one quick question for you, Greg. Are you seeing questions coming in uh, that are addressed specifically to you in the chat box? I know you mentioned you'd seen a couple come in, and I'm I'm just seeing the one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I no, I guess what I saw was it. It says, "Please answer your questions here." So <laughs> sorry. No, I I'm not getting direct message. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Well, Greg, if you go back to that last slide uh, with your contact information, um, a really terrific presentation. Really appreciate your time uh, doing it. Uh, as I mentioned in a lot of the emails going out, April is is uh, what we refer to as safe digging month. So this is always sort of top of mind this time of year, and uh, I'm really interested in, in seeing uh, seeing this this program um, be uh, taken up by by more folks. And, and really appreciate Greg's time to to tell us more about it. If anybody has any last second questions, um, I'm happy to to give a couple more seconds to let see if those come in. But uh, in the absence of that, I will. Uh, be happy to respond to any emails that I get um, asking for for a recording link um, or this presentation. Uh, Greg, if you could send the presentation to me whenever you get a chance uh, this afternoon, that'd be just great. And uh, I'll make sure that everybody who asked for that gets that uh, by tomorrow morning. And otherwise, uh, please feel free to contact Greg directly at the uh, the number of the email that's that's shown here on the screen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. Okay, thanks.